We are here today to provide a community briefing about the coronavirus that is making headlines across the country and around the world. And while there are currently no confirmed cases in Missouri, and we are at a low risk, we are still preparing and planning. And here in Columbia and Boone County, we are doing our part to be prepared, but not panic. Columbia is well equipped with large numbers of hospitals and healthcare providers, robust first responder and emergency management operation agencies, and a strong public health department that has been coordinated jointly by the city and county since its inception over 50 years ago. And while the disease, this specific coronavirus, COVID-19, is different, our response is the same. Following guidance from the Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, they are issuing health and hygiene instructions to the public while stepping up our coordination with other agencies and other levels of government, as well as our immediate neighbors. Services, Stephanie Brown. Director. Good morning. I want to thank everyone for coming this morning. I see a lot of people that I've worked with over the years that I rely on in times like this, so thanks so much. So as the mayor said, <clears throat> there are no confirmed cases of novel coronavirus or COVID-19 in Boone County or in the state of Missouri. As the number of cases continues to grow in the United States, we have been taking steps here locally to prepare. The health and well-being of everyone who lives, works, burns, and plays in Columbia and Boone County is our top priority. Many of our community partners, from healthcare, education, government, emergency management, public safety, nonprofits, and businesses, are sitting towards the front of the room. We work with them closely to ensure that they have the latest information from the CDC and the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services. When we learned of the first cases of novel coronavirus in, in Wuhan, China, our agency started monitoring this disease. Since January, we've been in regular communication with the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services, and we participate in weekly calls with the Centers for Disease Control. We consider them to be the subject matter experts around COVID-19, and we use their guidance to when we're making decisions of how we would respond locally. While our goal is to prevent transmission locally, our obligation is to prepare for it. Public Health and Human Services is working with our local partners to ensure that we can have a timely, efficient, and appropriate response should the need arise. Our department has an emergency preparedness plan. We train on it and we exercise it regularly. The plan is called an All Hazards Response Plan, and it does include how to respond to outbreaks and pandemics. It was developed with many of the partners in this room. Our staff meets every month with healthcare providers, hospitals, and our first responders, and we work to make sure that our plans are all complementary to each other. We used our plan in 2009 when we responded to H1N1. We used it again in 2016 when we responded to an outbreak of mumps in our community. So I want to say an effective community response is an all-community response. We all have a role in protecting ourselves and those around us. Some of the best things that each of us can do are the things you're hearing over and over again on the TV. Wash your hands often. With open water, at least 20 seconds. People always say, sing the happy birthday song. Just wash, wash, wash. If soap and water aren't available, use a hand sanitizer. Make sure it's at least 60% alcohol or more. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, mouth with your unwashed hands, which is hard to do when the pollen counts are up, right? Um, avoid close contact with people who are sick. Cover your cough or your sneeze with a tissue, and if you don't have a tissue, cough into your elbow. Clean, don't forget to clean the surfaces that you touch regularly and disinfect them. 
your, your phone, your mouse top, you know, your anything like that. And finally, when you're sick, stay at home. Last week, we had over 500 cases of influenza reported to our department here in Boone County. The flu continues to pose a big risk to the health of those of us in the community. And taking these steps will prevent you from getting the flu, and they'll prevent coronavirus should it ever arrive here. The last thing I want to say is we've seen a lot of images on the news with bare shelves and people stockpiling, and I think for some that feels very alarming. Um, so I'm going to give you something to think about. Consider every year that we encourage you to stock up on your food, medications, etc., in the event of a weather emergency, that we're coming into tornado season. This is what we should be doing anyway. Our, and so our recommendation as it relates to preparing for COVID-19 is very similar. If you're ill or you've been exposed, we don't want you to go to the grocery store to have to get your groceries. We want you to be able to stay home and take care of yourself. So I encourage you to just think about, think about tornadoes and what you need in your house. And think about if you needed to you know, stay home because you've been exposed or think about those things that you might need. At this time, we can't really predict what will happen with COVID-19, and so that's why I'm encouraging you to plan ahead as much as you can. And we will continue doing our part and being prepared to respond to the time come. So at this time, I would like to turn this over to Dr. Stephen Witt, who's the Chief Medical Officer at NU Healthcare. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me today. Uh, rather than uh, repeat all of the excellent advice given by Ms. Browning, uh, I would uh, intend to focus on our acute care uh, facilities. Are we ready in case we do have an outbreak? Uh, we are uh, monitoring uh, hourly the state, national, worldwide uh, responses to COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2 is the virus, COVID-19 is the disease, uh, just to be clear. Uh, we believe the risk uh, in our community is very low, but it doesn't mean we should not be prepared because eventually uh, we may see it. Uh, MU Healthcare has procedures and protocols in place to treat patients with COVID-19, very similar to the way we currently treat influenza patients. Uh, we maintain a safe environment for our patients, our community, their families, uh, and also our care providers. If you or an individual has a uh, respiratory illness consistent with uh, COVID-19, we ask that you stay home, uh, and if you get uh, sick, that you call your physician and get advice. Uh, that physician could be in clinic, could be in an urgent care center, could be your family physician, could be one of our physicians, uh, and could be an emergency room physician. Uh, we're exploring the use of virtual visits at the university. Us and many other parts of the country think that this is an excellent solution to both uh, normal influenza season as well as instances like COVID-19. Uh, patients can get quickly evaluated, get their questions answered, and we can get the sick patients that need to be in a hospital to a hospital, and we can keep the patients who don't be, need to be in a hospital safe and, uh, in their community uh, and uh, with their family. If a decision is made to test uh, a person, uh, we test very similarly to the way we test for many other diseases. Uh, some diseases we do at our local labs, some go to uh, our state lab here in Missouri, some go to places like the CDC. Uh, we will not be testing everyone. Uh, we test people uh, with indications for tests with those tests. If you don't have indications for those tests, we don't. This both protects the supply of the testing materials, but also uh, reduces the likelihood that the test will be uh, not representative of uh, true disease. Uh, people are concerned with uh, shortages like uh, personal protective equipment. Uh, at this time at Immune Healthcare, we do not have any shortages. We do not predict any shortages. Uh, and with the uh, absence of boarding, we think uh, we are well prepared. Uh, we meet with our supply chain uh, folks, just as hospitals are doing all around the nation, uh, and we are confident that we will have the personal protective equipment for both our patients and our staff uh, that we will need to cover this uh, time. Uh, our preparedness plan for dealing with COVID-19 includes protecting our staff, uh, 
the measures that you use to protect, uh, that we put in place for H1N1, uh, that we update every single year, that we updated when Ebola uh, became a, a real possibility, uh, uh, and now uh, with COVID-19, uh, uh, we use the exact same uh, uh, protections that we would use uh, for all those patients. Uh, we are confident for preparedness strategies. We've been taking care of our region's uh, uh, sickest uh, and most injured patients uh, for uh, many decades, and we will uh, and we are prepared to take care of this uh, any patients that get sick with this disease. Uh, I think we're happy to take questions at the end. I would love to introduce uh, one of my many bosses, <laughs> <laughs> Chancellor Cartwright. Thank you, Dr. Webb. And thank you, Mir, for uh, arranging this today for us to actually talk a little bit about what we're doing. Um, it, is it is terrific to see so many of our partners here today, uh, people that we work with all the time, and this actually goes to show how much we come together as a community and that we're prepared uh, to work collectively. Uh, you, you've heard uh, from Dr. Witt, you've heard from Ms. Browning uh, about the best uh, practices moving forward. Um, I won't spend any time on that. They are the experts and we're fortunate enough in this community to have amazing experts that can actually help us with when anything like this comes up. We pride ourselves on our relationship with the community. At the, the, our university always works with the community and we look forward uh, to uh, whenever we have a challenging situation that we know we can count on each other. Our civic leaders, first responders, we've been building those relationships for a long time. When I first got here, um, uh, Gary Ward, our Vice Chancellor for Operations, uh, one of the first things that he briefed me on was our preparedness plan and how we as an institution respond under crisis and showing me how we bring together people from around the entire community uh, for us to actually uh, work together in tabletop exercises where we look at different scenarios. And in fact, yesterday uh, we had one of those and I want to thank all the people from the community who actually participated in that to help us to continue uh, to be prepared. Uh, and that, that is just part of what we do. Our planning is always uh, going on. We're always thinking about what may happen. Scenario planning is important. And we want to make sure that everything that we're doing uh, in our messaging and in our planning aligns, of course, with CDC guidelines. Our, all, we're always looking at how do we make sure that anything we do is in the best interests of our students, our faculty, our staff, and of course, the community.